name is Matthew Hanasano from MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Today I'm going to be discussing an article for plastic and reconstructive surgery entitled Comparison of Allergan, Mentor, and Ciantra Contra Cohesive Gel Breast Implants, a Single Surgeon's 10-Year Experience. In 2012, the FDA approved the use of contra cohesive gel breast implants for clinical use. The theoretical benefits of this implant are related both to the cohesive silicone gel material contained within the implant and the fact that they are shaped and textured. This more cohesive silicone gel material may result in less rippling, a lower incidence of rupture with lower leakage rates even if a rupture occurs, better projection and less capsular contracture. The shaped nature of the implant may also provide a more natural look to the breast implant with greater lower pole fullness and projection. The texturing process, which is necessary to prevent implant rotation, is also thought to help decrease capsular contracture. As these implants have only recently been approved, limited data exists regarding their outcomes. This is a prospective study comparing the complication rates of contoured cohesive gel implants from all three manufacturers, including the Allergan 410 implant, the Mentor CPG implant, and the Ciantra HCG implant. The total enrollment for this study was 695 patients, which is a good number to look at overall complication rates. However, because the subjects included a mixture of three different implant manufacturers, as well as uh, were performed for three different indications, including primary augmentation, secondary augmentation, and postmastectomy breast reconstruction, the ability to compare outcomes between the implants in, in these three settings may be somewhat limited. The overall implant rupture rate was 0.7% which is low, but demonstrates that cohesive gel implants are not immune to rupture. A minority of patients had MRI surveillance for rupture, so the silent rupture rate can't really be determined from this study. The occurrence of a silent, rather than a symptomatic or otherwise clinically detectable rupture, would be a perceived benefit of these implants. The only statistically significant finding with regards to complication rates were that patients receiving mentor implants for primary augmentation seemed to have a lower complication rate. However, these complications included many that would be hard to describe to any difference in manufacturing process, and also, Mentor was the last group of implants to join this study and had the shortest follow-up time, which could have affected these results. There was no statistically significant difference in implant rotation rates, which was 1.3% overall. In addition to complication, capsular contracture was graded on a 1 to 4 point scale, and satisfaction was graded on a 1 to 5 point scale by the patient and by the surgeon. The capsular contracture rate was 4.7% overall, but notably as high as 13.3% in postmastectomy breast reconstruction patients. The authors didn't mention what proportion, if any, of the reconstruction patients received radiation therapy, which I think could have greatly affected the results. The mentor implants were associated with the lowest rate of capsular contracture, but again, had the shortest follow-up time. The patient and surgeon satisfaction analysis showed Allergan to have the lowest satisfaction rates, but these were also the first implants in use in the study and, these, and therefore the results could have been affected with the learning curve associated with performing these surgeries. The Allergan implants were also the most frequently used implant in breast reconstruction following mastectomy, so this may have also contributed to this finding. The use of subjective scales obtained by the surgeon investigator staff is a common method of assessing aesthetic outcomes in these types of studies, but must of course be understood to have a high risk for bias and lack of statistical validity. This study is timely and of importance because it provides the best available evidence comparing the FDA-approved cohesive gel implants made by the three different manufacturers. My personal interpretation is that the implants are roughly equivalent based on the data presented with the caveats I have mentioned. Further experience will be helpful in determining whether there are indeed differences between the three different implants and between these implants and traditional silicone gel implants. On a final note, there were no cases of anaplastic large cell lymphoma recorded in this uh, study. Greater experience will of course be necessary to look for any correlations. I congratulate the authors on a study well done.